Hello there, welcome to another unlockyoursound.com tutorial with myself Chris Cavalio. The goal of this tutorial is to uh, use a single ultra beat in multi output mode so that we can mix down independently each of the voices that we use. So for example, on my mixer I'll have a fader for my kick drum, on my mixer I'll have a fader for my snare, my clap, my hi-hats, etc. So I can mix them independently, so they all have their own faders on my mixer, and I can also um, process each of them independently. So, you know, if I wanted to compress the snare and the hi-hat and not the kick, etc. Uh, so let's get started. So I'm just gonna load Let's get going. So I want to take you through this process from scratch. So I'm just going to make an empty project here and a uh, software instrument, ultra beat. And um, in fact, I'm going to do, I'm going to go empty on that. So just a software instrument track, but I'm not going to load the instrument because I want to take you through that. Um, here's my software instrument track. I'm going to go to instrument and load ultra beat multi output. Great, just gonna close that a sec, and I'm gonna very quickly um, program in some MIDI. So I'm just gonna do this very manually right now. I'm doing everything manually right now, um, as to not miss a beat, so to speak. And then uh, we'll get going on actually separating that out. That's fine, I'm not going to worry about. Fine. Uh, I'm just going to loop that just so it keeps going and then put my cycle region on. Okay, great. Now, if I look at my mixer, here we are. Uh, I've only got the one track. Okay. But there's already, I'm already hearing some elements that I want to be quieter relative to the other elements of the drums, etc. But at the moment, they're all running down one track. However, because I chose multi output mode when I selected Ultra Beat, um, it's given me this little plus symbol here. Okay, um, I'm gonna click that once. Okay, I'm gonna call this one, this auxiliary strip that it's created for me, I'm gonna call that one Kick. And um, from there, I'm going to leave that for a moment and I'm going to open my Ultra Beats interface and I'm going to go to kick. So that's the kick that I used. I'm going to click and hold. You see where it says subgroup? Okay. Um, these are like stereo outs and these are mono outs. So I'm going to choose a mono out. I'm going to choose number 17 on this one. Uh, yeah, subgroup 9, 17. I'm going to close that, and where I made this auxiliary channel strip on my mixer, um, I'm going to change the input. Okay, so basically, uh, these are like buses. These are Ultra Beats' own buses. Okay, this one's, the kick is going out to um, bus, bus subgroup uh, 9. Um, so I'm going to make the input of this auxiliary, uh, the equivalent of that, which comes up as UB17. Okay, um, so basically these first eight are stereo, and then uh, this 17 here, that's a mono, okay? So it breaks it down into to channels. Stereo obviously has two, two channels. So UB17 is going in, in down this channel strip now, so if I play back, it shouldn't sound any different, but you'll see a little bit of a difference. Okay, I chose mono because I always choose mono for kick, just in case because I would never, nearly never want my kicks to be uh, in any way spread in the, in the stereo field. So it's just a habit that I have. And to be honest, um, more often than not, I only do this for the kick, uh, just because I like to separate the kick out, especially if I'm side chaining. So what, what we have here now is all of the drums are output into this channel, are going through this channel, and my kick is going through this channel. So if I brought this one down, you know, it means I can mix the kick against, you know, the rest of the drums. Even though in a mix down, I'll probably use kick first, but you get the idea. Um, so that's how I how I did that. If I wanted to take that further, um, let's say that I wanted my clap to be independent as well. 
Um, but I might use a stereo bus for that as opposed to a mono bus because I might want to pan it. So subgroup two will do, which are outputs three and four. So close that and then create another auxiliary here from Ultra Beach channel. Uh, awesome, it's already selected three and four, but otherwise, again, I would click hold Ultra Beat three and four. And um, that should be it. Yeah, so if I soloed this channel now, so now I'm able to mix, you know, that independently, which means I can actually, you know, when I'm when it comes to mix down. Obviously, there's a serious lack of context for me to mix in here, but you get the idea. I'll probably mix my kick first, mix some context against it. And there you go, um, simple as that. So that's how I was able to um, programming some drums in and separate the different voices of Ultra Beat out into different buses and then different auxiliary strips on my mixer uh, to so that I have the freedom of mixing them down independently. Um, you know, another benefit here is actually I could I could automate, for example, this clap volume fader without affecting the volume of the rest of the um the rest of the mix uh, how i would actually do that is um so this is going on to another feature that i talked about in another video as well but happy to cover it here if i double click underneath here it makes a, another software instrument track and please note that for the next feature you do have to have advanced tools on preferences advanced tools turn them on, just turn them all on in there, so it's preferences, advanced tools, and then you just enable all. From here I can reassign track header, so I'll go to mixer, uh, I, I right click, go to reassign track, mixer, aux, and then uh, auxiliary, sorry, aux2, and this one for example you can see here in my channel strip it's UB3 and 4 which is what I set for the, uh, for the for the clap and uh, sorry, I'm not going to put an audio region there, but if I opened automation now and uh, created a node here, and let's say I wanted my clap to just gradually come in to the mix, um, it would do so without affecting the rest of the mix. So let's have a look at that. That's just another benefit of using multi-output because it gives you the freedom uh, to automate your different tracks as you make them uh, independently. Guys, let me know if you have any questions about that. Uh, it might be new to you guys. Happy to you know cover any spots that I missed in that process. So just let me know in the comments below and I look forward to hearing your questions. Cheers.